Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Shiva Ayadure. I, I hope everyone's having a great new year. So I wanted to launch the new year by doing uh, short educational videos. Many of you know that um, I've been uh, trying to educate the broad group of people, not only in the United States, but globally on a systems approach to starting to look at the world. So you can use the systems thinking to understand how things work. And that's our citizen science uh, workshop, which we run on Mondays typically from 7 to 8.30. However, I've gotten some great, great feedback saying, Dr. Shiva, why don't you do some small videos and explaining pieces that we could share? So given the big discourse that's taking place on vaccines, I thought I would take a step back and really share with you the modern immune system and really explain it. Um, uh, by way of background, many of you know that I have four degrees from MIT. Uh, my PhD is from MIT in the field of biological engineering. Uh, I, I, get, I get asked to speak at all the major institutions in the world, uh, be it the NIH, be it the NSF, Harvard Medical School. Um, but my passion has always been health for probably four decades. Over the last over uh, two and a half decades, it's really been on molecular systems theory and really focus on the immune system. So uh, I think I can uh, share this with you in a very uh, uh, simple way without losing the complexity of this. And that's what I want to do today. So let's join us over here. So first of all, uh, what we need to understand is that the immune system that is taught to the MDs or the pediatricians is literally about uh, 100 plus years old, or uh, that's on a bad day. On a good day, it's probably around 60 years old. What I'm talking about is that the theory of the immune system that's used dates back to 1915, so that you're looking about 100 plus years old or if you want to give them a little bit better, about 100 years old, which is about 60 plus years, all right? In fact, sorry, 70 years now, right? Let's put 70 years, okay? So that's what we're talking about. Um, so what? So before we go into really talking about what is the really the modern immune system look like, let's really um, educate you on what the concept of the immune system, that's that 100 to 70 years old that's being used today. So you understand uh, sort of the backward science that's being used to look at things like vaccine intervention as the, as the way to build immunity in your body. So that concept of the immune system really involves uh, what I like to, I'm going to draw it here, two boxes. Um, the first box that we look at here is called the innate, and Alan, I think you're zooming in on this, right? Mm -hmm. I want to thank Alan Erickson. Alan's an awesome guy to work with. Um, so the innate immune system is one of the boxes, and over here, I'm going to draw what's called the other box, and let's call this the adaptive immune system, or the adaptive system, okay? So let's just look at it. You have two systems, the innate system and the adaptive system. So the typical medical student, the pediatrician, uh, healthcare professionals today, uh, on a good day are trained these as the two components, the two interacting components of what we call the immune system. And in this concept of the immune system, um, what happens is let's say you get a virus coming in. This is your virus coming in. And by the way, these are within your body. When the virus comes in, it typically, uh, in the natural model, comes into your innate immune system. And then your body will generate things to uh, what I call infantry, or let's call it uh, a series of non-specific agents to attack it, non-specific agents. And these agents are things like macrophages, okay, neutrophils, dendritic cells. These are essentially, uh, if you want to think about it, the war analogy, these are essentially, essentially a, a whole set of artillery that's used to go attack that virus. The key thing is this uh, artillery or these set of weaponry are nonspecific, which means it's basically a bunch of soldiers you throw out there and they just start shooting at everything. Whether this virus is a measles virus or any type of pathogen, bacteria, they just start starting to shoot at everything. It's called the innate system because this is where it first comes into your body. And what I mean by that is your eyes your nose, your throat, uh, your mucus system in your gut, um, your respiratory system, your skin. So this is where the virus first hits in the natural mode. And in this process, the body tries to attack it using this thing called uh, the innate or nonspecific immune system. 
The timeline on this is around zero to around 72 hours. Okay, so it's very quick. It's nonspecific. It tries to knock these out. The second process that occurs is that this system initiates the adaptive system. And the adaptive system is really composed of two uh, subsystems. One I'm going to call T cells and B cells. So these are what are called the specific. So when, again, I'm going to draw the virus here, if you're looking over here, the virus comes in here again. And in this case, this system responds by generating something called antibodies. Okay, these are antibodies. And these antibodies, and the virus also, another big term that they use, because it doesn't have to just be a virus, it could be some type of bacteria, it could be an allergen, it's called an antigen. So just to look at it, the, the virus or the antigen, call this also antigen, comes through here, turns on your innate immune system in the first uh, 72 hours, and thereafter, what happens is, in around three plus days, the adaptive immune system gets turned on in response to this, and it generates something called antibodies, okay? And this is basically the, uh, the current view. It's not the modern view, but this is a current view that's taught in medical schools in the basic thing. You have the innate system, and the adaptive system, I call it sort of the two-box model of the immune system. And if you get these antibodies generated, you know, you're in great shape. Where vaccines come into this is the theory of vaccines is basically saying, hey, look, instead of you being exposed to measles, you know, when I was growing up, you know, I got chicken pox, I got measles, the innate immune system got turned on, and then the adaptive got turned on, I generated antibodies, and I became resilient to this virus. In the modern view, people are saying, well, it's bad to get this virus. Someone decided that we'll talk about that when we get to risk, if not in another video. Therefore, we're going to give a thing called a vaccine. And a vaccine, we're going to give it right into the adaptive system. So what do you see right there? We are not going through the innate system. We are short-circuiting right into the adaptive system here. And as a part of going through the adaptive system, we're going to be happy if this generates this thing called the antibody. Okay, I'm going to write antibodies again. All right? So what this is saying is I'm going to give you a vaccine, and the vaccine is attempting to mimic the natural virus. Okay? So they're trying to mimic nature. And when they try to mimic this, what they try to do is they try to take either a dead version or an attenuated version. Sometimes they do the live, but in the dead and attenuated versions, they add... Uh, they bring in an Uber driver. <laughs> the Uber driver is known as an adjuvant because that dead or live virus, remember, it's not the real thing, so it doesn't really interact that well. So they add aluminum or uh, other adjuvants, and they're doing this because there's been a lot of uh, uproar on things like thimerosal, mercury, or aluminum, and that is used to simulate the real virus. Okay? So that's vaccine, but the whole model here is if you get the antibodies, you're in great shape. All right? But what is actually going on um, in the recent work that has come out over the last probably 20 years with the advances in systems biology, uh, with, with the new notion of systems immunology, and this is something, by the way, doctors and pediatricians do not learn. Um, the people out there who are trying to, um, unfortunately, uh, impose a science, which is, again goes back to 1915 and 1950, saying that once you get the antibodies, you're okay, are unfortunately not really uh, giving the whole picture. What is the whole picture? Let's look at it. It turns out, between the innate and the adaptive, is another very important system called the interferon system. I'm going to remove this for now. Interferon. Or some people call it IFN system for short. And you can read about this. Uh, the interferon system was found around in the mid-50s, late uh, early 60s, by uh, Isaacs and Lindemann. And what these guys found out was quite fascinating, was when they introduced a virus into a rabbit, they noticed that in that area where the virus was introduced, the rabbit was actually immune to other viruses. Okay? Not just the virus that was given, but to other viruses. So they wondered, how is this happening? 
And it turns out that they discovered things called interferons. One, so when the virus came in through this process and it went in, the body, I'm going to use my blue marker for the output, actually created something called IFN interferon beta interferon alpha. And these were essentially in between the innate and the adaptive. Okay? In addition, later on, the body also created something called interferon gamma and also lambda. I'm not going to get into all these details. There's videos I have on it. But the point is that when the virus came in through the natural way, macrophages got turned on, their interferons got turned on, and the gamma and the lambda were important in modulating the adaptive system. And then more importantly, what people have learned recently is that this system, the adaptive system, also then modulates back. It's a feedback mechanism. So think about it. If you just simply started producing antibodies, 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 and you didn't have a way to shut the system off, you would essentially have some type of autoimmune disorders. Your body's just constantly creating antibodies. So the point is, oh, we're constantly creating an inflammatory response, that there's a feedback mechanism. This was also discovered. It gets even more interesting. Um, more, more recently, over the last 20 years, we've also realized there's another subsystem that can grow like this called the microbiome. Biome. This is all the organisms within your gut, your body, uh, your mouth. You know, we have about 10 trillion, and this, there's some arguments on this, bacteria. We may even have about another 100 trillion viruses within us, what's called the virome. So what it turns out is for every one cell we have, there may be equal or 10x more viruses and bacteria on us. This is called the microbiome. And the ratios of the bacteria, the percent of what's called the ratio of bacteria in here determines various levels of health. And this is a, a brand new area of research. More importantly, so this is in your gut. By the way, this is everywhere, but let's call this in your gut, which many people in gastroenterology in the fields of um, this field consider it your first brain. This system also communicates with something else here, which I'm going to draw right here. I'm going to do it here. And let's call this your neural system. This is your brain. And in fact, there's a direct linkage between this and this. They are talking to each other. OK? So what you're seeing here is that the neural system, your brain, and your gut talk to each other. Differences that affect your microbiome cause neuroinflammation, different diseases of the brain. And, and, and there's a communication system. In addition, the system, the microbiome, is also communicating with your innate system. It's communicating with your interferon system. I'm going to put all these lines here so you get this concept. And the adaptive system. And these systems are also communicating uh, through these channels. This, this is still an area of research. But what you see is there is a complete, complete communication system going on uh, beyond just the two-box model of the innate and adaptive system. So in summary, what we're saying is the innate and the adaptive system, virus comes in, your body turns on, the macrophage is your artillery, then you get your specific response to create antibodies. This was the old model of the immune system, okay, that is being used to say that when you give a vaccine, measure the antibodies, great, you're in good condition. But let's look at reality. This, we're in 20, 000, uh, 2020, as of today, and in 2020, we now know computational systems biology tools. We have bioinformatics. We have found that 98% of the genome is actually composed of RNAs, which turn, on, turn off the other 20,000 genes. We're like in a bold, brave new world. But what I can tell you, there could be other systems here. I'm sure there is. But you can definitely see that the immune system, the modern immune system, is composed of the innate, the interferon system, the adaptive system, the microbiome, and the neural system. When we naturally get, let's say, chickenpox and measles, look at the beautiful choreography that uh, happens here. The innate system gets turned on. And by the way, the old theory was that the innate system did not have any memory. Only adaptive did. This is not true. The latest work 
shows that the innate system and the interferon working together actually turn on about a thousand genes. The chromatin changes in the DNA, and this is actually has intelligence, it too has memory. So when you get hit with a virus, this remembers, it turns on the adaptive, this is communicating to your gut microbiome, which is communicating to your brain. So does it make any sense for people to think you're gonna measure immunity by one variable? It doesn't. And that's what I want the key takeaway to be. When you look at this complex systems, there's ratios of bacteria in here. For example, people with, uh, they looked at two groups of people who had neuroinflammation. Uh, I'm gonna use the word quote unquote autism. One group of the autistic kids had the very different ratios of microbiome than the non-autistic kids. This is just one uh, simple example. The recent work has shown how we've seen certain types of neuroinflammation in the brain because of the gut-brain axis. The bottom line is we're looking at a very, very complex system. And in closing, I just want to, uh, we'll do more videos on this, but in the interest of time, I just want to, uh, people wanted me to address a couple of issues. Natural versus vaccinated immunity. So if you really look at this, there is a significant difference when you're getting the virus or the pathogen, the antigen coming through the innate, through the IFN microbiome. Many different things are being turned on. And the work that we've been doing this, that, you know, is just from a systems perspective with, again, MDs and pediatricians, unfortunately, they don't get this training. If you go back to this, if you're simply just putting the vaccine coming here and you take subsystems will also try to modulate themselves. This is basic systems theory. It's the ankle bone is connected to the foot bone. And what that means is that we're looking at the body because it was, it was incorporating something out, you know, outside, what we call a sort of a fake virus or vaccine, is going to respond. And these responses can include things like lupus. These are autoimmune responses, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, et cetera. This is where the body is confused. And this confusion is occurring because we have essentially gone around and cheated the system, as Al and I were just talking about earlier, right? It's cheated the system. Um, if you look at these two points, so when we look at risk assessment, I'll come back to herd immunity. When you really look at risk assessment of this, the entire process here of giving a vaccine was based on the notion that there is no risk. And the notion was that um, if you get these antibodies, that the system is efficacious, you're in great shape. In fact, Jonas Salk, when he developed the polio vaccine, he didn't really, I hate to say this, he didn't really give, give a damn about toxicity or risk. He just wanted to make sure, I'm gonna give this vaccine, if it generates antibodies, we're in great shape. But the reality is when you perturb a system like this, you are gonna imbalance, and it's not gonna to happen to everyone, many other subsystems in here. And as a part of doing that, if you're gonna go do an intervention, then you should be ready to also do what's called a risk assessment. Risk assessment means that it's not just about generating antibodies. What are the potential other things it can generate? And just to be clear, we'll do the, another video on this, but out of the 13 standardized vaccines that are supposed to be for children, not one of them has had double-blind saline placebo-controlled studies. That means you split the group. The groups don't know who's getting the vaccine, who's getting what's called the saline solution. And then the doctors or the researchers don't know. And then you gather the data. None of those vaccines were saline placebo controlled. In fact, the one that they did, which was Gardasil, that vaccine was a fraudulent test. They gave half of the people the vaccine. The other half they didn't give the vaccine. They gave the adjuvant, the aluminum sulfate. And then a third group, a very small group, around 300 people, they gave the placebo. And then in the insert, um, by the way, the group one and group two both had about 2.3% autoimmune response, and they said, oh, this is about the same, so there's no big difference. The point is, there has not been, been any adequate risk assessment done on this. When you're looking at a complex system like this, you need to do that. Finally, in closing, herd immunity is a concept that came to justify what percentage of people should be vaccinated. And this is really the issue right now with the bills. So for example, measles, Someone decided about 30, 40 years ago, actually measles vaccine came out in 1963, um, that um, there are people who are immunocompromised. Think about those people who may have AIDS, chemotherapy, they're getting some leukemia, a blood marrow transplant, they're in an ICU. Those people are immunocompromised. In the United States, 
one out of 2,000 people are primary immunocompromised. For those people, to protect those people, that's why I call this, to protect the herd immunity is to really protect the minorities. It's sort of a social justice argument. So in order to protect those one out of 2,000, in the United States, that's about 170,000 people. The argument was made, a certain probabilistic number of people, let's say of the 300 million people in the United States, need to be vaccinated. That number was decided to be initially around 75, 80%. So this basically 240 million people need to get vaccinated to protect the 170,000. Okay, let that sink in. Well, that wasn't working too well. So they, they cranked up the numbers to 85%, then to 90%. Today it's 95% for measles. So the goal is we need to vaccinate 95% of the people, which is nearly 270 or north of 270 million to protect the 170,000. That is on the assumption that of the people you vaccinate, that none of them are going to get any problems uh, from this process, that you're not gonna create injury. And that is what the herd immunity concept is flawed on because it's only talking about the 170,000 here, it's not talking about the vaccine itself may cause other perturbations and create other types of autoimmune disease, death, injury, et cetera. Those risk assessment numbers have not been done and we need to do that. Anyway, in closing, uh, I hope this is valuable. I'm trying to keep these short. Uh, this is really the modern view of the immune system. And again, um, uh, I gave this talk at the National Science Foundation. I gave the distinguished invited prestige lecture. So you can feel confident that this is not something that's coming from fringe science. You're talking to real scientists and I hope this has helped you understand that the immune system is far more complex and by short circuiting what we're doing and measuring a single variable antibodies, it's not uh, on a good day, you could say it's outdated science, but on a bad day, it's really very risky, fake science, not real science. Anyway, this is Dr. Shiva Adure. Keep an eye out. And by the way, um, I will be in New Jersey on January 6th. We will be doing an event there to really uh, talk more about science education, et cetera. So keep an eye out. Anyway, be the light.